In one month from tomorrow, we're all going to be voting for the Kentucky governor race, the race that's been watched closely around the nation. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us on the night team. I'm Doug Profit. In September, voter registration across Kentucky surged, adding over 8,600 new voters. WHS 11 night team's Taylor Woods is here with more ahead of the voter registration deadline, which is really coming up fast. Taylor? Doug, the Jefferson County Clerk's Office is hoping for a solid voter turnout during the 2020 23 voting election, but in order for Kentuckians votes to count, they must register by October 10. It's that time of year again. The deadline to register to vote in the 2023 election is just four days away. Democracy only works when folks take the time to participate in it. Inside Jefferson County Clerk's Office branches across Louisville, voter registration cards are available at the door when folks walk in. Employees have spent the last few days registering Kentuckians. To make sure that not only are they as informed as possible on the candidates that they could be voting for, but that they're registered as well. According to the Secretary of State's office, 8,614 new voters were added in September. Republicans now make up 46 percent of the electorate and Democrats make up 44 percent. The rest are registered independent or other political parties. Aaron Huber, Director of Communications at the Jefferson County Clerk's Office, says in order for votes to count, voter registration information must be correct. You have to be registered or so maybe you're changing parties or something of that nature, that your voter registration is as up to date as possible. Although voter registration surged in September, the Secretary of State's office says over 5,000 voters were removed last month for a variety of reasons. Huber says voter registration can be done by mail, electronically, or in person by 4 p.m. on October 10. They can come in. We have a special table set aside, and on October 10th, we'll have some of our team members helping to direct customers over. Registration blitz will take place October 10th at every Jefferson County Clerk branch. It's the push to get many people registered as possible by 4 p.m. In studio, Taylor Woods, WHAS 11 night team on your side. Taylor, thank you. A man is seriously hurt tonight after his catamaran style boat caught on fire inside a storage facility in Oldham County. The boat caught fire just before 10 this morning at a storage facility near Cardinal Harbor. North Oldham Fire Department tells us they don't know how the fire started, but there was about 200 gallons of fuel on board the boat. It took us about three hours to suppress it because of all the fuel. Wow. So that's why the incident lasted so long. Yeah. Um, and also protecting, there was some fuel storage on either side, so we were protecting what we call exposures, make sure yeah. the fuel didn't end up there as well. Firefighters tell us one man was taken to the hospital with seriously bur serious burns. Nobody else was hurt. We've been following the courts in uh, Nelson County all day long, and tonight we can tell you that there is so far no decision yet from a Nelson County judge on whether or not he'll be lowering the bond of Brooks Houck. Yesterday, attorneys for Houck called his $10 million bond unreasonable, saying it's the highest they've ever seen. They've requested the judge lower the bond to a half million dollars. However, prosecutors argue that bond is fair, adding Houck's assets are worth 10 million, if not more. The judge is reviewing the request and says he'll release the decision later. We do not have a timeline on when that could be released. City of Louisville's announced a new incentive to attract new 911 call takers and dispatchers downtown. Officials say there is a critical need for 911 dispatchers and operators as the profession experiences a nationwide shortage. To help attract people, MetroSafe is offering an $8,000 hiring incentive upon successfully completion of the training. Now, applications open today for the Training Academy. For more information on how you can apply, head to our website, whas11.com. The United Auto Workers will not be expanding their strike against the big three automakers after an 11th hour deal with General Motors. UAW President Sean Fain announced that GM has agreed to place electric battery manufacturing plants under the national agreement. The deal comes after the UAW threatened to strike GM's Arlington assembly plant. Fain also provided an update on negotiations with the other companies, including Ford. Our first wage proposal from the companies was a 9% raise from Ford. Now, with members standing up everywhere, three weeks into the strike, our top offer is 23% from the same company. That's two and a half times higher than they started. It's not where we need to be, but it's a hell of a lot further along. 
Louisville's Ford plants have not yet been called out to strike, but Fain warned today if negotiations stall, they wouldn't hesitate to expand the strike once again. All new here on the night team following a string of horse deaths across the country this spring. Keeneland and Lexington is unveiling new technology as they get ready to start their short fall meet. It's called Stride Safe and uh, gives track officials in Lexington the ability to monitor a horse's movements. Under a small sensor, under the, right under the horse's saddle, the technology can identify any injuries or abnormalities that a horse ha may have while they're performing. The goal is to prevent further injury or even death. It gives us the ability to sort of monitor uh, the movement of the horse and to be able to be in a position to characterize how they're doing when they're performing here at Keeneland. And today's opening day at Keeneland was the first time that the track has implemented the new technology. Keeneland's fall meet runs through Saturday, October 28th. Post time is 1 p.m. daily. There is no racing at Keeneland on Mondays and Tuesdays.